Did you know when Bob Shaw ran 8.26 for two miles as a world record for the distance at the time, Bob was known for his shorter, faster approach to training. In fact, almost all of his training was short, fast intervals. The flip side of that, if you look at Australian great and former world record holder Ron Clark, his training approach was very different. His was predominantly longer, moderately hard distances of above 10 miles, twice, even up to three times a day at particular times of the year. Now the truth is, regardless of where you're at in the world, if you're a distance runner, your training is structured somewhere in between the likes of these two runners. Regardless of where you put your particular runs, your sessions in your week, there's a very good chance you're doing a long run, there's a very good chance you're doing some shorter, faster race efforts, which is beyond the pace that you're required to run on race day. Now, due to the influence of athletes like this, that's perhaps no surprise, but what has been very interesting in recent years is to see the breakthrough or the popularity of a method we've come to know as the Norwegian method take place and take excitement in and around the endurance sport scene. Today, I want to take a look at why it is that it's become so popular, how it is that it's become so effective, and whether or not it's a great approach for you. The goal here is to give you a little bit of a taste test, to simply dip your toes in the water of what the Norwegian method is, and hopefully give you some food for thought when it comes to how to structure your training. Now, unless you've been following the science of endurance sports very closely through athletes like Gordo Byrne in the early 2000s, ultra endurance superstar, there's gonna be a good chance that this style of training is brand new to you and probably, like so many of us, has been introduced to you via athletes like Gustav Eden, triathlon champ, or maybe even the Ingebrigtsen brothers, also Norwegian middle distance running champs, particularly that of Olympic champion Jakob Ingebrigtsen. But what is it that they're doing? What is it that is so different? And how are they handling this training, which seems to have far more of an approach to volume than so many of the other athletes out there. For many of us, we're focused on running at race pace and beyond. For these guys, it seems less important for almost all of their sessions. The first question I wanna answer is, what, what the heck is the Norwegian method? Well, at its most basic level, the Norwegian method is a far more controlled approach to your training. It's controlled in the sense that it comes at training with a more scientific approach, using a lot of testing of blood lactate levels throughout running sessions with the use of blood lactate meters to measure blood lactate levels. Now, the reason they're doing this, the core focus is it's giving the athletes a training which is done at a slightly lower intensity without that blood lactate getting so high with the aim of helping them find a sweet spot which in turn allows them to run at a far heavier volume than what they would otherwise do. Now, before I go too far, I just wanna make a quick note. I've recently finished watching the Team Ingebrigtsen documentary on YouTube. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. Now, one thing which is so interesting, is such a standout point, is that at the age of around 12 or 13, Jakob was running up to 80 kilometers per week, sometimes even more. For that age group, it is unheard of or almost entirely unheard of for an athlete his age to be running that kind of volume. Now, so many of us come at that training and we say, hey, this is a problem. An athlete that young shouldn't be running that fast. And in many cases, that is completely true. But the argument goes, perhaps it's true that so many young athletes can't run that distance. Firstly, because they haven't worked up to it over the course of a number of years. But secondly, because the intensity of the training that they're doing all throughout the week is far too high to allow them to build up this kind of volume. Based on the fact that Jakob has gone on to achieve what he has, and there's more athletes, Gustav Eden is one that I've mentioned, who are taking this heavy volume approach to their training and producing incredible results, the conversation must be opened and expanded about how effective this is for other athletes. But before we get to that, Let's have a bit more of a deep dive into how it's actually set up and why it is so different. Now, as we've already established, the Norwegian method has a far greater attention paid to the distance and the volume that is being run at a slightly less intense pace than what so many of us have become comfortable training at. More specifically, it has a focus on rather than simply just breaking a workout down into efforts that are completed at a faster than the goal race pace, which naturally leads to higher blood lactate levels, the approach here will see an athlete run workouts slightly slower 
and usually allows aerobic fitness and lactate threshold to increase through an increase in volume. Now, one thing that athletes who use this method are known for is what they call double threshold runs. Now, perhaps you've heard this in Ingebrigtsen's training. It's a session where rather than just going out and running an easy run in the morning and perhaps a session at night, they do a double session day. They might go out in the morning and run five by six minutes off a one minute rest. And then in the afternoon, go out and run 10 by three minutes at a slightly higher blood lactate level allowing them to push a little bit higher. Now, obviously some athletes who are running shorter distances, which is between sort of 1500 and 10K, are gonna split some reps into shorter, faster distances. Now, granted, you have to take some time to consider what it is that produces the best result. If there's one thing in distance running, which we know for a fact, it's that every athlete, as shown at the start of this video by Bob Shaw and Ron Clark, has a different approach to training which works more specifically for them. As an individual, I really felt the need to hit some harder, faster reps before 1500 meter runs. That was psychologically beneficial. One conversation I had on the Relax Running podcast a couple of years ago with Australian 3000 meter record holder, Stuart McSwain, was when he had just run 331 for 1500 meters. I was shocked to hear that at the time he hadn't done any training of faster than 331 pace. Now, I don't think that the Melbourne Track Club or Stewie was using the Norwegian method specifically, but I do know he had a great focus on the longer, more aerobic style of training, which is perhaps food for thought or even a little more fuel to the fire of the Norwegian method that we're hearing about here. One more thing that the Norwegian method approach has to training is you'll often throughout this documentary see Jakob and his brothers running on a treadmill. And I I was often wondering, watching it, what what is it that they're doing here? I went on to find out through an article posted on Marius Backen's website, which I've linked in the description to this video below, that often they like to standardize the particular approach to training. Now, naturally, if we're going out on terrain and we're trying to do a hard workout, there's gonna be certain variables that we're gonna have to deal with, whether it's the elevation, whether it's the wind, whether it's the weather, On a treadmill, all of that is eliminated. If you can use the same treadmill in the same room at the same time, the same speeds, it allows you to see how well your body is actually absorbing the training that you're giving to it. So breaking down a session on a treadmill when everything is the same there might give them a more accurate reading of their blood lactate levels. Now, this is a really deep, really broad, really interesting subject that I really encourage you to check out at more detail. Check out that article by Marius Backen. It's become really popular. It's gone viral most recently amongst a lot of endurance runners. And that is because it breaks down at a far greater level how it's done, how it's implemented, and what it might look like for you. If you've got any questions around the training method, make sure you shoot them down in the comments below. How do you find as an athlete you respond to training? Are you an athlete who focuses a bit more on speed, a bit more endurance, or do you have a nice middle ground. Would love to hear your thoughts there. In the meantime, if you need any more help from me over at Relax Running, make sure you hit the Relax Running link in the website below. If you need a little more food for thought, have a look at this video.